So now that we've gone through how we're going to work together online, we're going to dive straight into some creative writing tasks. Two main challenges that face creative writers when they first start out is the blank page and how to get over that hurdle and also drawing readers into their work. How do they take the reader into the world they want to create on the page? And there's lots of different ways you can approach that, but the way in which we're gonna work with it today is by doing some quick fire writing activities on working with the five senses. We tend to over rely on visual description when we write. And so what we need to do often to immerse the reader further is actually look at some of the other senses that we have available to us. So, uh, you know, sound, smell, taste and touch can also, if woven carefully through a piece of writing, really immerse the reader in the world, give them an almost 3D experience. Uh, let's start by just trying to generate some senses. Uh, so we'll start, you know, with some quick fire activities with this, this generative activity and just see what comes out the pen just for a minute or two. So I'd like you to try and finish the following sentences in your notebook or if you're writing on your laptop that's fine too. Uh, green sounds like, purple looks like, yellow smells like, red tastes like, pink feels like. It's all up on the board for you there and I've given you an example sentence that I wrote myself very quickly uh, just so you don't have to overthink these things. Green sounds like the creak of my garden gate speckled with flaking mossy paint. And I'm afraid that is a true story. My garden gate does need a real repaint. So I'd like you to think about your own experience now and delve into these uh, different sentences. Try and finish them. You can do them in any order. Uh, so you, you don't have to start. If you find the first one's a bit tricky, you can move on to another one instead. So I'm just going to give you two minutes to try and uh, finish those sentences. And then we'll see what we've got. Off you go. Okay, that's about time up on that. Don't worry if you didn't get through all five sentences. However many you did is absolutely fine. What I'd like you to do is look at the sentences that you've written and choose one that you think is perhaps the most interesting. Uh, notice I didn't say perfect, but interesting, something that makes you think or feel something. And I would like you to just type that into the chat box so we can get a sense of what people wrote in response to this task. Thank you, Murray. First one into the chat box. Yellow smells like butter. Slowly melting on my toast. 
not only can I visualize that toast, I can smell it and I can almost taste it from that description. So it's way more immersive than just saying that somebody was eating toast. Uh, Cattell, red tastes like blood oozing from my paper cut finger. Excellent. So what we've got there is we've got a conflict in that sentence. We've got drama in that sentence. And all we were trying to do was, uh, you know, show some sensory imagery. But you've actually included some drama and conflict there. All right, a paper cut maybe isn't a big drama, but it is still nonetheless uh, an injury of some nature. Uh, JS, uh, pink feels like the soft, sweet icing on top of a cupcake. Excellent. I can almost feel that, uh, that sort of mouth feel when you eat a cupcake as well. Brilliant. Uh, pink feels like soft candy floss from a fun fair. Absolutely. Again, I can almost feel that in my mouth as I read it. Purple looks like sunlight through a stained glass in a dusty old church beautiful and yes I can really clearly visualize that purple looks like fluffy sticky candy floss all over my face Phyllis says <laughs> excellent it's interesting isn't it how Ed and Phyllis have chosen the same color and just completely different tones to the sentence completely different ideas uh, yellow smells like mango juice dripping down my chin and staining my sparkling white shirt says Gordon really specific information there uh, all about the mango juice dripping and so there's action in there as well as a sensory image and green sounds like the wind on a spring afternoon that's beautiful innocent thank you uh, that's really interesting that idea of almost being able to hear the green of spring in the air it gets my mind working overdrive as a reader so hopefully you can already see <laughs> that there's quite a lot of possibility, even just at sentence level with this kind of sensory imagery. So that was to get our minds working in a creative fashion and thinking about the five senses and how we connect with them. And what I'd like to do next is do a short piece of creative writing where you work towards a state of flow. And what I mean by flow is that as you're writing, it's just sort of coming out the pen. You're not having to overthink it. You're not feeling too much resistance. Your mind's not trying to stop you. You're not um, sort of struggling for the next word. It's just flowing. OK, so that's the, where we want to be after this particular task. So we're going to do something called a free write. And this is a technique that was first used in a book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. A little caveat, it's quite an old craft book. So if you look it up, you might find some of the ideas in it a little bit outdated. But free writing and the art of free writing is something that has been used for a very long time that first stemmed from this book. And all it means is that you keep the pen moving for two minutes and you do not stop it. OK, even if you have to repeat the same sentence three times before you can move on to the next sentence, you keep the pen moving. So you force both your hand, your writing hand or your typing hand and your mind through the resistance we often feel when we see the blank page in front of us. No one's ever going to read this. This is for you only. But afterwards, I will ask you how you found the activity. So we'll have a little discussion about that, but I will not ask you to read anything out from the, this particular task, okay? So I'd like you to take your favorite sentence from your warm up, whatever your favorite sensory sentence was, and I'd like you essentially to take it for a walk on the page. And what I mean is use that as the first line in a sentence and then just see where it takes you. And it can take you absolutely anywhere and you can change subject at any point and you can go back and forward between subjects and no one's ever going to know because no one's ever going to read it. Just let your mind wander and let your mind wander onto the page, just splurge it all out, okay? No resistance, no overthinking, no editing, no spell checking, especially no spell checking. We're just going to write, all right? So let's enjoy the experience of nobody checking our work for two minutes and just being us on the page. All right, two minutes, off you go.
Okay. That is pretty much time on that task. Again, wherever you've got to is great. If you were going somewhere really interesting with that and I interrupted your flow, just write yourself a little note about where you were going before you're rudely interrupted by the tutor so you can pick up the thread later because it might actually take you somewhere really interesting. But I'm just going to ask a couple of people to tell me how they found that task. Uh, was it difficult, easy? Um, did, was there anything surprising about it that came out the pen? So let's just hear from a couple of people. Um, Anjali, would you mind unmuting and just tell us a little bit about how you found that experience? And so initially I found it quite hard and it was really tempting just to stop um, but then as I kind of I found myself kind of creating a picture or like a scene where I could see this um, the original object or the sentence kind of fitting in um, so then it became a bit easier after that. Excellent thank you for sharing that and well done for pushing through that initial resistance. These, this particular task is not for everyone. And that's why I'm asking a couple of people how they found it so that we understand in the group that actually there's lots of ways into creative writing. This is one way. It might not be for everyone. That's okay. We try these things. If they work, brilliant. If they don't work, we try a different way into it. Thanks, Anjali. So a little bit of resistance to begin with, but then you did manage to just push through that. Excellent. Um, Innocent, how about you? Would you mind just unmuting? Was it difficult, easy, anything interesting or surprising? Do you mind just unmuting for me? Yeah, at first um, there was some resistance, but then I started working through it. Um, the thing is, it didn't make sense. It just went into this kind of story, which is almost propping into the middle of a page, uh, in the in, in, into a page in the middle of a book where there's something's happened, something's going to happen, but you, you don't know the context. So it was a bit strange. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear it's a bit strange. I'd be a bit worried if it wasn't a bit strange, to be honest, innocent, because it's the way our minds work, isn't it? It just kind of goes from one place to another. It's like, this doesn't make any sense. But isn't it nice for once to not have to make any sense, to just be able to write and let, let that motion take over and not have to really be accountable to it, about it to anyone? Um, some writers use this on a daily basis. They'll set an alarm for maybe five minutes or 10 minutes on their phone and they'll just take a prompt and they'll just start writing. OK, and what they'll do is they'll put the sheets away because like Innocent flagged and as Anjali kind of like hinted at, they're not always they don't always make the most sense in the world. They'll put it away for a couple of weeks. They'll come back and what they'll do is they'll what we call sort of panning. You know how you pan for gold in a river? Uh, so you're looking for some golden sentences or phrases or interesting um, ideas that you then pull out of your crazy, nonsensical free write. And then you take those little bits of gold away and you create something from that. So don't worry if you ever do an activity like that in creative writing and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That's normal. What you hope to do in a few weeks time is come back to it and go, I like those two words next to each other. I'm going to just put that in a separate document and so on and so forth until you've got quite a few nice phrases and sentences to draw from if you're writing a description or if you're introducing a character or whatever it might be. OK, so you can end up creating quite a nice creative writing bank for yourself to draw from when activity, when inspiration is kind of lacking, shall we say. So that's sort of the idea behind that activity. OK, I hope that got us through the initial resistance of the blank page. <laughs> it is always something that we all grapple with, with, myself included. And I'm, you know, 10 novels into this now. So for me to be sitting there looking at a blank page with the cursor blinking at me, thinking, oh, I've got to get through this again, is perfectly normal to feel that way. So what we're going to do then is we're going to extend what we've done on the senses. This is going to be our last little quick fire task. And we're going to choose choice one, choice two, or mystery choice three as a setting we're going to describe in our uh, page. And the, the task is that you have to do it without using the sight sense. So you can only use the four other senses, no sight whatsoever when you're describing this setting. So you can use sounds, you can use smells, you can use touch, and just to go back to the beginning uh, slide, you can use taste, smell, sound, touch, okay? So you can use those four things describing these places, but that's it, no, no sight, okay? So you can choose a cityscape, 
it doesn't have to be New York. It can just be a city that you know or that you don't know you like to visit. You could choose like a, a beach scenario or mystery choice number three is a place that you would like to describe as a setting. So it's your own choice. And you just think I've always envisioned setting a story there or writing a piece about that place. I'm going to use this activity to do it. That's your choice. You can do that. So I'm going to give you a few minutes, about three minutes this time. This is our last quick fire task uh, to write about a setting without using the sight sense. We are going to share a bit of what we write. If you want a really big challenge, because the more limitations we put on ourselves, the more challenging creative writing is. There are poets out there who challenge themselves to only write poems that include the vowel A and no other vowels. Like that's the way we're talking here, right? Okay, so there's a lot of challenge going on in the creative writing world and, and kind of restriction can be a big challenge if you want an extra task you could just choose one of the senses that is not sight and, and describe the setting only through that sense. So only through sound, only through smell, only through taste, only through texture, if you want a real challenge. <laughs> Maybe you want to take it easy. That's fine. Either way. OK, uh, so you're going to have three minutes to do that. Um, if, anybody, if anybody has any questions, please type them into the chat box. Otherwise, I'm going to start the three minutes to describe a setting of your choice without using the sight sense. And those three minutes start now. Okay, that is time on that task. Again, if you were going somewhere really interesting with that, and I've interrupted, do write a note to yourself so you can go back to it later. I'm just going to ask a couple of people to share, even if it's just a few sentences you've written, just so we can get a sense of how people responded in the room. So, uh, Ed, would you mind unmuting? 
for just sharing okay. which which choice you made and and uh, which task did you do, you did okay i tried choice number one um sort of assuming it's new york mm -hmm. and what i wrote so far is was it the constant hum of the traffic far below muffled as it was by the heavy curtains or was it the shaft of sunlight that fell through the chink in those curtains and blazed across the bed and across his forehead a warm Haley's comet just for him or perhaps it was the occasional whine of the lift machinery down the corridor that gave the unmistakable impression of being high up in the city Whatever it was, before he even opened his eyes, he knew he was waking up in the clinical anonymity of a city hotel room. Oh, wow. What an opening. Well done. That's got so much atmosphere to it. And you didn't Thank use you. the sight sense. If any of you are thinking about that sunlight beam, uh, it is the feeling of the sunlight hitting the person's skin. OK, so it, it is you can see how they're all very closely connected. We can visualize that sunlight beam, even though we're talking about the, the heat sensation of it on our on our skin. I mean, I'm utterly intrigued by this character. I have no idea who they are. I don't know what's going to happen next. But partly it's your use of the questioning. Was it the is it the, that sentence structure? So that we call those rhetorical questions for those of you not familiar with them. It's where you ask a question, you're not expecting an answer. You're just trying to prompt the reader to think about that idea. It's partly that. So it's partly the way you structure the sentences. And it's partly also the fact that we get this incredibly immersive feeling of all the sights and sounds, sorry, sounds, not, not sights, sounds and um, sensations of the world around this character uh i really hope you continue with that it's really really impressive Thanks, it was well a great done. challenge because you've inspired me to sort of think about writing with someone with their eyes shut yeah because i thought that's the only way i could not write about sight if i imagined he's got to have his eyes shut good idea which so of course makes us trail. brilliant which of course makes our stories more inclusive because people managing disabilities such as um, not being able to see or, or, or deafness are not very much included in literature. So it makes our stories more inclusive if we think about things from a slightly different perspective. Thanks, Ed. That's really wonderful. And just to finish, can we have Katel? Would you unmute and just share what you've written? Yeah, so uh, here's what I've got. Um, the wind whooshed through the treetops, the millennial trunks creaking under pressure, releasing the citrusy scent of the pines and hemlocks. The carpet of pine needles, a sea of discarded arrows, felt soft under her feet, muting her discreet approach. Wonderful. So much. Right, so there's a few things. So Ed had the rhetorical questions and then the other senses. What you've got there is very specific, concrete language. And by that, I mean, um, you don't just say there's kind of foliage on the floor. You explain that there's pine cones and hemlock and very specific information about what is on that carpet floor there that's muting the approach. So you've got that, but you've also got these other senses. And your selection of those senses creates a very dramatic feel, uh, almost a tension immediately. Uh, so again, I really hope you continue with that because I'm really intrigued as to why this person is making a muted approach. That sounds really sinister. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Crime writing. Crime yeah, writing. okay. Crime writing. Yes. Okay. So that's really excellent. Well done. This has <laughs> been a really you. excellent session. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, we're going to move on to our next topic soon.